Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we found this beautiful neighborhood in Washington, D.C., kind of in the northwest part of town. Been riding around all day on these different specialized models, and we're looking at the Como 3.0. So it's the entry point for 2020. And I've checked this bike out a couple years ago, and you know, it's such an interesting blend of like cruiser, comfort, like you look at the, the seat tube angles kind of back, this really beautiful and comfortable body geometry, the cup saddle, I love this thing. Like it's, it's one of my favorite saddles and it's got these little elastomer bumpers in there. So it really does give you some cushion, uh, which is nice because there's no suspension on this bike by default. It's a rigid aluminum alloy fork, a rigid seat poise, 30.9 millimeters if you did want to upgrade that to a suspension post and we've got a real treat for you later Charlie's got his bike over there. That's totally customized Integrated light in the saddle, which in some ways is cool. You know people could kind of see you from behind This bike doesn't come with fenders or a rack by default So they, they stuck it right there and you know, it raises it a little bit compared to a clamp on uh, Light and it is integrated meaning it runs off the main battery. That's all really nice but you know if you're wearing a a jacket and the, the back of your jacket hangs down a little bit, it's gonna block the light, which is kind of a bummer. Or if you do put on a rack and then you put like a trunk bag, it, it could block the light again. So there are some compromises here, but at least they're going for safety. Specialized has done a really good job with their bikes. Just beautiful. And I'm gonna go over all the points in a minute, but we also have a Herman's headlight here. It's mounted to that fork, so it points where you steer. Some of the other accents to just keep you safe are these reflective sidewalls on these Nimbus Sport tires, really nice tires, smooth, extra thick rubber. They do have black belt puncture protection, which is really nice. And they're fairly high volume, okay? So this is 27.5 by 2.3. And that extra volume gives you some stability and it helps to span bumps and cracks and just gives you a little bit of comfort depending on how full you inflate them. So I have listed this back at the site, but 25 to 50 PSI, that's a pretty good range. I'm a rather lightweight guy myself, so I tend to ride a little bit lower pressure and then it helps to absorb the shock. You know, just like that nice saddle we were talking about earlier, they have a relatively short stem with a nice like kind of upward angle and this swept back handlebar with their body geometry ergonomic rubber grips. And they are locking, right? So everything on this bike is specialized branded. They do such a good job with their their design team, and even the colors, the paint colors. I forget what this one's called, but it's kind of a metallic dark blue with some black accents and some you know, highlights mixed in. Just awesome. Uh, and at several colors, five frame sizes on this and two frame styles. So right here, this is what I would consider just barely a step through. It's almost mid-step, but it, it does go pretty low here. And that's just gonna make it a lot easier if you have sensitive knees or hips to step right over the frame to mount it. If you're a little bit sportier, you can get yourself the high step frame, which, you know, it's still a rather sloping sort of a lower high step, but that's gonna be a little bit more stiff. It's maybe a little bit more masculine and they make it in a slightly larger frame. So there's only two options in that low step and kind of three options in this high step frame. Really awesome. And again, the colors are sort of dependent upon which frame you choose. Okay, so coming back to the bike itself, 36 hole rim, with reflective stickers, the reflective sidewalls on the tires that we talked about, the integrated lights. And then it's not just visuals, but also performance. So this aluminum alloy rack does have mounting points to add fenders if you want. And then they've got side mounts here. So you could do like pannier bags or maybe the fender support struts. And then there's another boss here. So you could do different kinds of fenders or have multiple support arms. Just, just really well done that way. And then this is a 15 millimeter through axle. Okay, so a lot of times on electric bikes, especially city or you know cruiser bikes, you've got a nine millimeter axle with a quick release skewer. So to have a 15 millimeter through axle here, this is almost like mountain bike level componentry. Really, you know, pretty, pretty upgrade right there. And then in the back, we have a 12 millimeter through axle. And that one is also a little bit thicker, a little bit more sturdy, a little bit less frame flex, more power going from the pedals into the frame and down to the ground. 
Specialized is a performance company, right? So, you know, that's carried through all of their different products. And I really appreciate seeing it even on their, their cruiser, even on kind of the entry point model here. Again, this is 3.0. This is $29.49, so they're just below that $3,000 price point for a mid-drive electric bike with a fully integrated battery that's color matched with bottle cage bosses. I mean, that's awesome. And you might notice a second pair of bosses up here. And, you know, take a minute here and look at this. It's not a lot of room for an actual water bottle cage down there. And so some people are like, why did they even have it? But I think they just, they have a template, they have a mold for this battery. And on the high step frames, there's plenty of room to do like a Z cage or maybe a folding lock. In this case, there really isn't too much room, uh, but you, there are a couple accessories. There's actually like this boomerang bicycle GPS thing that we did test and it does fit down there. Maybe there's something else that's really slim, a toolbox or something like that. And then the saddle back up there where that light is, they actually have like a squat, um, like accessory gearbox thing that could mount in place of that light. And I was talking about the seat post before, 30.9, you know, that actually, there's a cable going from that light all the way down in through the frame. So if you do replace that seat post, it might be tough to sort of, you know, disconnect that cable and then reconnect it. And if, is it a hollow tube? If it's a suspension post, you're gonna pinch that wire. It comes back to like the complexities of having uh, a, a light that's integrated into the saddle. And again, just some limitations here on the step through. This frame's not gonna be quite as rigid. You might get a little bit more frame flex than the high step, but, for people that want that accessibility, you know, you can really drop that saddle down and this thing can become a very comfortable ride and one where you can put your feet down fairly easily without even dismounting uh, from the bike. So I appreciate that. And it's just the swept back design and everything. And look how custom this stem is, right? It's actually like almost like aerodynamic and it just blends right into that uh, head tube right here. Just a nice setup all the way around. And of course, even the pedals, they're custom. These are nylon platform with sandpaper grip. They've got some reflectors built right in and the kickstand. This is another custom specialized design down here. So it's, it's kind of pointy, but that point actually extends. So you can tip the bike up or back depending on, you know, the terrain. So let's talk about the drivetrain. First of all, there's a sticker slap guard on the right side. And that's nice because, you know, the chain could bounce around and especially in that higher gear, it could get close to and nick up that really fancy paint that we were talking about a second ago. Also, if you're riding with pants, you see this like plastic shield right here. That's a chain ring guard and it's gonna keep your pants from touching the chain. It's also gonna keep the chain from bouncing off track. And it's close enough to the frame here it's kind of a plastic portion, but a little bit of maybe aluminum alloy down here. This is mostly plastic in this region of the bike, but it's gonna keep the chain from bouncing off that way. So it's almost like a guide setup, which is really nice. And the chain ring right here, this is aluminum alloy, lightweight, and it's a narrow wide tooth pattern. So they lock into those links perfectly so it doesn't bounce up or bounce off quite as easily. Again, this is like mountain bike technology that we're seeing here on kind of a city cruiser bike, just very impressive to me. Uh, 48 tooth chain ring, uh, rather large. That's gonna slow your cadence down and just make for kind of a comfortable around town sort of ride. See, they've got this engineered in Switzerland uh, marking right there. The original turbo, I think it was like 2012, 2013 when they brought it to the US and it was really ahead of its time. One of the first bikes, e-bikes that had integrated battery and stuff. So, you know, they're still doing a great job. Back here to the cassette and the derailleur. This is 11 to 36 tooth nine speed so very good this is exactly what i'd like to see feels like you know for kind of their entry point and bike and price point uh, on the the como line that's that's great that's excellent for climbing with a 36 tooth or hitting and maintaining 20 miles per hour with the 11 tooth shimano alivio it does not have the one-way clutch which is something that i've been seeing on the vado that's like a a sportier around town zippier commuter bike um but you know, does a good job. It's tucked in a little bit. It's got a little bit of a tighter spring, so it's not gonna be bouncing quite as much, but you just don't have that, that clutch. That's one of the little trade-offs. Huh, <sighs> gosh, just looking at this thing and I'm kind of noticing the black crank arms, the pedals, the chain ring, the black spokes, the black rims, everything's kind of blacked out here. So it really ties in nicely. It almost looks like they've got a reflective sticker on that front hub too. And then coming to the very last piece i save the best for last of course it's the brakes and this does have hydraulic disc brakes two finger levers with adjustable reach so you can bring those in if you've got gloves 180 millimeter rotor up front and 160 in the rear 
which is the same thing that we were seeing for like, you know, the, the Vados, uh, which are faster, like speed pedelec bikes. So they often use Shimano, whereas this is Tektro. So it might be a, a step down in terms of branding, but you're still getting that same sort of high end performance with a larger rotor in the front, which is going to provide a better mechanical advantage for stopping and a little bit more surface area for cooling. So I really, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. I actually have the keys in my pocket. I'm gonna take off the battery in just a second. One area that they have kind of spec down a little bit to save some money is with the charger. So this is a 1.3 pound two amp charger versus the 1.9 pound four amp charger that comes with some of the higher end bikes that have higher capacity battery packs. This battery pack is 36 volt. I think it's like 12.8 amp hours, roughly 460 watt hours. Oh, but the key is still really good. So this is the plus code card from Abus. Nicer keys. And it means that with this plus code card, you can get this same key matched for a folding lock or even like a cafe lock. But this frame doesn't have the cafe lock mounting points by default. There is a way to set that up yourself. You can pay a shop to like drill some holes and stuff and, and set up some other features. I'm gonna show you those in a minute, but I do wanna point out that it doesn't have those by default. So I'm gonna put this key in, try to line it up just right, there we go. And then that, that twist, okay, got it. You can take this off. This battery pack is roughly six pounds. And again, the bike, 46 and a half pounds. I was really impressed because this is the large size frame for a step through, 46 and a half pounds, that's incredible. Most of the other Vados we were looking at today, they were like, yeah, I think it was like 52, 53 pounds, depending on the frame size. I was really impressed with that. So here's the battery pack. We've got the on off button, which gives you some indication of how, how full the battery is. So you can determine that if it's not mounted to the bike. And it is a good idea to store this in a cool, dry location. Try not to drop it. There really isn't a handle built in, but you can grip the case pretty easily. Yeah, 12.8 amp hours, 460 watt hours. It's a 36 volt pack and you can charge it off the bike. Will you hold that, Charlie? Sure. Uh, so this is Charlie McCormick from Electricity Bike in Washington, DC. You've got several outlets. That's right. We have three shops here in DC area. Well, and thank you for bringing out your bike. That's, it's a real treat. I can't wait to jump into it. But before we do, let's, I just wanna see the charging window. So if we just tip it like that, it's magnetic. So this uses the energy bus uh, charging interface, which means if you trip over the cable, it'll just pop out, right? It's not gonna break this. This is uh, highly water resistant to everything on this bike. The electronics are all IP rated against uh, dust and water and stuff like that. So this, this battery is pretty fancy. It is a plastic top. So try not to scrape it. it I don't know what color, is it black underneath? Uh, I mean, it's just a basic black battery underneath black. that, yeah. Okay, so if you get the darker colored frame, you might not notice those as much. They have a paint matched cover here that I'm saying could get scratched and it'd be black underneath, I think. Um, but that oh, cover, so. yeah, you get it now, right? Like yeah. the battery pack itself is just this black portion underneath. They do sell, I think a 604 watt hour pack for 900 bucks. If you really want to max out your range, again, this one's 460. So I was estimating like, 40 or um, I think 20 to 50 mile range really depends. 50 is a little bit hopeful for this 460 watt, but. But well, hey, I mean, lower yeah, speeds, done it. 20 mile per hour, and they have the lower levels of assist. And with the mission control app, you could actually dial in the assist level. That's right. So there's a lot of variability in these slick tires and stuff. It's always just an estimate, you guys, based on like the terrain, how full the tires are, your weight, how much you, you know, but the, you can still get a decent, Decent chunk of range. They out of have this a uh, specialized has got a range calculator on their website. Oh that's yeah, actually, uh, according to my experience, and I've had a lot of it, very accurate. So you can really figure out if you chose your ter your terrain and all these other factors that you put in. It'll tell you what to expect for range. Fantastic. Will you help me put the battery back sure. in, Charlie? So I'm gonna take the keys out to get them out of the way. This is one of the areas where the bike can be a little finicky. You really got to line that up just right at the bottom. It doesn't always match up, so maybe tip it up a little bit so the bottom kind of... It's a little fiddly, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not quite in yet. There we go, there we go. So you want to line up the base, and then the top kind of comes in at an angle, which is really nice because it means they can have this lower top tube. And then, you're going to do it? Yep, I'm just showing that it's got that phantom click problem where it looks like it clicks in, but you have to give it a little 
slam and a bit of a tug to make sure it's in there. Yeah, and this is a brand new bike. So over time, it might it might be a little bit easier, but that's something Specialized seems to improved over the earlier models where there was a little bit more play. So they tightened it up to reduce that, but now you, you kind of got to double check. You don't want to drop that battery. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, as we said. So I think that's pretty comprehensive. I was going to jump into the display, um, but maybe before we do that, and there's a cute little bell, I want to show your bike. Is that cool? Uh, yes. He's can't wait, right? So this is also a Como, but what level is this? This is the top level. This is the Como 5. Wow. It's a Como 5 from 2019. Uh, that I have upgraded to the 2020 with the TCD display and that what he's saying here It's it's this little display right here because some of the earlier ones did they have the blocks displays? They had the box displays which was good solid and and the, the uh, Vado the Como particularly had a color display However, it couldn't connect to the mission control app. the mission control the Bluetooth app, right? Okay So you couldn't dial in some of those settings and adjust uh, and, and it's a neat app I've gone into it on some of the other reviews, but basically it lets you diagnose if there are any issues with the bike. It lets you sort of set and optimize the three levels of assist, and it also lets you plan trips. So you can say, I'm gonna go 25 miles, just make sure I get there with enough battery, or I'm gonna be riding for an hour, make sure I don't run out of battery, and you can actually save batteries. to be like, make sure I have 10% left. That's a pretty cool feature. It's a neat app, and they've been dialing that in over the years. They it's got have, a map and everything in there. It's unique. There, I don't think there's anybody else who has any feature, including Bosch or Shimano, that is anywhere near as uh, sophisticated. It has this cool like range feature that's it's a little bit different. A lot of these other displays show like here's the range you'll get right now, um, but you know it's not necessarily here's how far you could go. And it would this actually dynamically adjusts how much power it's putting out, and and you don't have to worry about it too much, right? Like that's that's pretty fancy. So the TCD display is mounted right up here. He's moved it to the side, which is kind of unique. It's on that arm because his phone mounts right in the center. And that is really great. You know, he can use the phone for GPS or whatever, and there's actually two lights mounted up here. The thing is you couldn't necessarily do that with some of the other displays. They were mounted to the stem and the stem has been upgraded here too. This is the red shift. It's like a shock stop stem. So he's got some vibration reduction. He's got a connect suspension seat post with a little glove over it. So it stays clean. The same saddle. You didn't have to upgrade the saddle. The saddle is just the, I mean, if there's one thing that really says Como, it's this cup saddle. It's just so wide and comfortable that uh, you can ride you know, all day. I ride all day. This I thing's ride. awesome. And he's he's upgraded with the fenders. He's got some plastic fenders, rack time rack with pannier hanger and blocker. It's got an integrated light that they wired into the bike. He's got this like trailer hitch action going on. These fancy special edition like silver and green, those green hub, silver, silver rims. And they are specialized. They do have that sticker. That's something you probably can't get. But remember I was talking about the frame lock, the Abus? This is the 5750 Shield Plus. It puts a rod through the rear wheel so people can't tamper with your bike you'd still probably want to lock the rest of the bike up if you were going overnight or for a couple hours but this is just something it's enough to like keep someone from stealing your bike briefly while you dash in and get a coffee and they custom mounted this they actually like screwed this into the frame they've got you know the abus key to like lock so all three of these are keyed to match the battery. That's what I was talking about. Abus does such a cool job with that key card we meant, mentioned earlier. They got the Z cage, so bottles can come in from the side. That's specialized. And then they've got this little, it looks like EMT, but I think that's another little SWAT accessory with a bunch of tools so you can do stuff on the go. They've even installed a defloppilator spring up front and custom mounted that to the frame without interfering with the battery. Amazing. And the reason this is important is because he's got a front rack it's a good thing i'm wearing my helmet guys <laughs> he's got a front rack and it's mounted to the fork right where we were talking about there on the sides and then up here where the fender mount is as well and it looks like that would be great for carrying additional panniers and extra weight but it kind of tips to the side because of that extra weight so that spring helps to stabilize it it also reduces speed wobble he's got the ergon grips with these nice little extenders these horns so you can change hand position if you're going long range and i think your battery is higher capacity it's right the 604 uh, watt hour battery oh works. yeah oh yeah so back there at the 3.0 level we're talking about the c and it's the cb so specialized has kind of customized the motor and dialed it in this thing puts out up to 50 newton meters of torque where i think yours is 72 or is a uh, 90 90 oh yeah. my goodness it's a little bit we'll, we'll have you ride that one and yeah. ride this one and just see if you can tell the difference but it's 
uh, it's it's a, a noticeable difference. I think this one still matches you up to 120 RPM pedal cadence, which okay. is which is really nice. Still measures your rear wheel speed, and you'll notice there's no magnet like clicked onto the spokes here. It's actually built onto the um, the the there it is. Right there, see that thing? There it is, it's a little magnet. It's connected to the disc brake rotor. So it's really tucked in, it's not gonna get bumped out of place. So the motor, motor measures rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque. And the Broza motors all have like this Gates carbon belt drive inside that makes them smooth, quiet. It's a very lightweight motor, it's like 7.5 pounds. It's got a, a smaller, I think 168 millimeter Q factor. It's just a nice, look at how like, integrated this whole thing is all the weight is low and center where you want it for stability whether you're mounting or carrying a ton of gear across the country wherever you go with that bike man that thing is crazy it's surprisingly versatile i mean i use it as my everyday city bike but its capacity is actually pretty good now why didn't you do this with avado why did you choose the como because uh it's because it's electric and the Como apparently comes from a Latin Comodo. Okay. Where Vado is Vado Go. Okay. And where the Levo is on is left for passing on your left on the trail. Interesting. Yeah. I always thought Levo was like lift, like it lifts you up the mountains. <laughs> We've been studying our Latin, our Spanish today. Uh, specialized is, is all about style, as you can see. But comfort is a huge thing for me personally. And you've really dialed it. That, that's, that would be my bike right there, too. Absolutely. And that thing is super after years of being in the bike industry where you know the whole focus of the conventional bike industry is speed and being able to be more aerodynamic yeah you know why not be comfortable yeah and it, it's like this opened up a whole world of cycling that we would sort of look down on a little bit in the conventional cycling world because it wasn't so performance oriented sure but you can have it all here you can have performance and you can have comfort absolutely man and i just again like hats off you guys did a really good job with I'm, I'm just, I haven't seen too many shops like actually drilling into the bikes and mounting these extra accessories. Usually it's like, well, if you don't have a boss's, you, you know, or threaded eyelets, you're out of luck. But you guys found a way um, and you haven't compromised the integrity of the frame structure or anything. And it still looks beautiful. So coming back to the Como 3.0, 2949, you know, we've gone over the battery, we've gone over the motor, 50 newton meters of torque. It is their kind of like lowest end motor. Uh, in terms of, of power, but that might also get you some efficiency. And so it balances out the lower capacity battery pack. It is impressive. And I like the touch points are color matched and stuff and this nice brown. I'm gonna boot the display up, the TCD. We've got a little control pad right here, but you have to actually lean down and press the power button on top of the battery. That's one of my complaints. It'd be nice if everything was up here, but it's not the end of the world. So we press the power button down here for a couple seconds and it boots up. We've got a little LED light indicator with five dots. Each dot represents 20% step. And then we've got a battery percentage readout and 10 bar infographic on the display. So again, I love that the display can be moved back and forth. This is backlit. There's even like a little light button, a dedicated light button to turn on and turn off these lights that are mounted to the bike. And I like that this headlight even though it's plastic encased, it's got that side window. So you're not gonna be just front visible, you're gonna be side visible with those reflective uh, accents as well. The display is not removable. It can be tilted a little bit. And then it's got these two buttons right here and they help you go through the different pages of menu. So I'm on page one right now, but if I click to the right or I click set, it'll cycle through. And we'll go from current speed and distance up to average speed and timer. Pedal cadence is mixed in there. We've got a heart rate monitor, power, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, kilocalorie, so you can get some feedback on how much energy you're burning as you ride, which is kind of nice. And it's in kilometers per hour right now, but if I held down left and right, it would enter into the settings, and then I can use these buttons to select and change some of those menus. It's a pretty advanced display. And I, we're kind of skipping the mission control for this app, or for this review, but we've got it on Charlie's phone, and you just pull it up, you turn on your Bluetooth, find the bike, put in the serial number from the bike, and then a little, uh, kind of a number, a pin number comes up and you match that to your phone and then you can mount the phone and use that as a, even more options. For most people though, you just turn on the bike and press plus or minus. And the plus is gonna give you more power up to three bars worth and the minus will take you down. You can actually go all the way down to uh, no power if you want and then you're just riding a slightly heavier bike with integrated lights, which is still great. You know, this is still a fun bike to ride around. I did some riding without power on the way just because it's a nice day and we're having fun and I wanted to get a feel for the bike. Very responsive, very tight, 
quiet and tight. That's how I would describe these bikes and beautiful. So with that said, we might have some more kids walking up the sidewalk. I think I'm gonna hop on and just you can ride around the neighborhood a little bit, Charlie. Sounds great. I'm, gonna hop. I'm in the highest level of assist. And actually, let me see if I can. So I'm holding the left and the right, trying to get into the display. I'm, I'm having trouble doing it, holding the camera. I was gonna switch it to miles per hour, but let's just be efficient here and do our little ride test. I'm in the highest level of assist as always. And the idea is that the motor will be the most pronounced and responsive in this mode. One-handed braking, doing just fine. Okay, guys, from here you can see that Broza CB, you know, custom-tuned motor for specialized. We got that 48-tooth chain ring. Just so cool that it's got the narrow wide tooth pattern. I really like that. And then 11 to 32 teeth in the rear. There is no shift detection with the Brosa motors. It's more like torque reliant. So the key is to ease off a little bit when you're shifting gears so you don't mash the chain. But with a 50 Newton meter torque peak here, it's it's not quite as bad as like the 90 Newton meter high end one that Charlie was riding earlier. It's still, I'm gonna shift and I, I do tend to ease off just to protect that drive chain. Um, 120 RPM max support, which is very nice. So you can pedal faster. You don't have to worry about that. On some of the competing products like the Bosch Active Line, it peaks out at like, 100 rpm or 105 so i like that broza still gives you 120 a little bit more performance oriented there i'm going to pedal along in the highest level of assist and yeah just give you some close-ups Very good. The brakes work great. The motor is peppy and zippy feeling, but um, you know, it's not too loud. It's just smooth with that Gates belt drive inside. It's it's a nice motor, one of my favorite motors actually. Um, but do be careful again, just mounting and locking in the battery, uh, just shifting gears. As with most mid-drive bikes, you get that efficiency leveraging the cassette so that the motor's not always straining. You empower it just as you empower yourself when you change gears. It's just the chain and the sprockets can take a beating if you aren't shifting kind of thoughtfully. Very stable with those 2.3 inch wide tires and 27.5 is kind of a, a, a mix. You know, we have 26 inch wheels and then 28 700 C. So the 650 B standard is right in the middle and it keeps the bike a little bit lower, closer to the ground. It actually provides more strength because the smaller diameter is a stronger wheel. Um, and it's a good, I think it's a good size for these slightly larger tires. Um, what do you think, the 650B standard? Uh, this, this is a very comfortable tire to ride on. I've ride these usually at about 22 pounds per square inch in there, and then uh, 25 in the back, and that gives it a little more cush yeah. to make up for the fact it's it doesn't have any kind of suspension. So it's like a half an inch or an inch of suspension basically. Interesting that you, yeah, you touched on a lot of times I'll also leave the front wheel, front tire a little bit lower pressure. It's a lot of your body weight and cargo weights usually in the back. So can we trade off and sure. I can be on that one and, okay. Take a right down. Oh, it's so good. Time. This is nice, very comfortable. Just gotta catch him. Yeah, and I, right away I can kind of notice like there's a little bit more weight and sort of a slower turning feeling just because because of that weight and maybe the spring a little bit too he's got like quad piston calipers on his brakes everything on this thing is upgraded and this is the louder um higher torque 90 newton meter uh like speed pedelec motor right i'm up to once i hit 20 party, uh, party stops so he's saying once he goes to 20, the party kind of stops on that bike. Of, of course, you know, that's the cutoff. And we're heading back up some of the national monuments. Oh, 
Oh boy. <laughs> Well guys, I think that's about it. We've had a blast just cruising around these streets and looking at some of the monuments. I do my best to be thorough on these, but if there's anything you feel like I missed or you wanna know, sound off in the comments and I'll do my best to answer or I'll see you back in the Electric Bike Review forums. Again, thank you to Electricity Bikes in Washington, DC. Thanks for coming out with me, risking your life on these crazy <laughs> streets, Charlie. <laughs> thank you, Court. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Have fun out there, you guys. Love ya, ride safe. I'll see you next time.